it's going to do is call self.photos to set this model right here. So in our storyboard, let's change our class here. Instead of being Flickr Photos TVC, I'm going to change this to be just posted Flickr Photos TVC. Okay? So now that's going to show my just posted ones. Um, so what about the implementation of this just posted? It's really easy. I just, in my view did load, super view did load, I'm just going to call self fetch photos and then we'll make a fetch photos method here and I'm just going to say self.photos equals something. Okay, that's, I'm, I'm going to get my uh, photos here. Uh, all right, what's the problem here? A root class. Hmm, ah, that's weird. Uh, oh, strange. Hmm. Flickr photos, TVC. Okay. Um, not sure why I didn't add that. Um, okay. So, there we go. All right, so that's good. So that's what we're going to do. So in here is where we're going to have to go out to make a fetch to uh, Flickr and do that. So let's go ahead and write that code. It's pretty straightforward. Um, one thing we're going to need, though, is a little bit of helper code to help us with those Flickr fetches. Um, and I'm provided this to you for your homework. Here it is right here, this Flickr fetching code. Oops. Let's go over here to this. I'm going to drag this in. We'll take a look, brief look at this. All right, I'm going to copy it in. All right, so if you look at this Flickr fetcher, it has this API right here that provides these class methods with some URLs that you can fetch information from Flickr. So we're going to do, uh, for example, recent georeference photos. For your homework, you're going to want to do top places because in your homework, you're going to be asked to show places from Flickr. Um, and I'm just going to be showing only photos. Okay? So we're going to use those ER URLs to do some fetching. So I better import flickrfetcher.h so I can do that. And how does this work? Well, let's get the URL that we're going to use to get those just posted photos from this Flickr fetcher thing, URL. And so I want this one, recent photos. So now I have a URL. I need to get that data. So that's NSData. Now, the data that comes back from Flickr comes back in a format called JSON. Raise your hand if you know what JSON is. OK, so almost everyone knows what JSON is. So, I don't want it in JSON, but that's my only choice. So I'm going to get those results in JSON by saying NS data, data with contents of URL. Same thing we used with data with contents of URL. Um, same thing we did before. But I don't want them in JSON format. Really, the format that I want them in is arrays and dictionaries. That's a much nicer format for us to deal with than JSON. JSON is like arrays and dictionaries, but not exactly the same. Luckily. There is a way uh, in iOS to do that, so we'll change that to basically property list results to turn a JSON thing into a property list, and that's with the class JSON, what's it called again? NS JSON serialization, and the method is called JSON object with data. You give it the JSON data options. We'll say zero. You can look those up if you want. And it'll return an error, an, at, you know, an S error, but we're not going to check for errors because it's a demo. And so now I have this stuff in dictionary format. So before we go any further, let's just log this. Flickr results equals percent at sign property list results. So I'm just going to log this so we can take a look and see what this looks like. So let's just run this. It's not going to do anything in our UI yet, but hopefully it'll log this particular fetch, hopefully the fetch works. So, oh, it, well, no, that's not working. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's okay. Let's do this. All right. Let's do it um, here. Because we haven't done our iPad one. It's trying to run it on an iPad. So we're just going to run it on the uh, simulator here. So here's our little simulator. Okay. We're not actually going to be looking at anything in the UI. So it's doing this fetch. And here's the information right here. Let's go ahead and make it big so we can see it. And you can see that it's a dictionary. This is kind of this little format that is used to log in as dictionaries. And inside this dictionary, there's a key right off the back called photos, which is another dictionary. And inside that dictionary, there's which page this is, 98,000 pages available, <laughs> OK, 250 items each. So a lot, a lot going on in Flickr. And there's another key here. And the value of this key is an array. And this is an array of the photos, each one of which is a dictionary. And you can see a lot of stuff in these dictionaries, um, including the title of the photo right here. And there's also this one right here, description. 
which is the descri a description of the photo. And this one's actually another dictionary, and inside it is a key that's the actual description. This one has blank description. So this one's gonna be a little more tricky to get this value out of this photo. But anyway, we're going to have to pull this stuff out of this dictionary in this kind of odd format. So let's just do that. Um, so we can get the photos out of there by saying, uh, how about this? Property list results, value for key path, and then in Flickr Fetcher, I have a nice little pound sign to find here to get those photos, that photo array, out of the photos dictionary at the beginning. Okay, but this has a dot in it, which is interesting. A dot it means this key, this key inside this key, the dictionary for this key. So it's kind of like following dictionaries inside dictionaries. Okay, that's what this thing does. So I'm going to use this, but to make it work, we have to use this value for key path method instead of using object for key, right, which would be a normal dictionary method. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do with the too many square bracket tissue. Okay. So that is going to pull those photos out of there. So now I have the photos as an array of dictionaries, and I'm just going to set my model to be that. Okay? So that wasn't so hard. Question? What's the difference between null and nil? What's the difference between null and nil? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, nil means an object pointer is zero, right? Not a, a pointer that doesn't point to anything is nil. Null means a C pointer is points to nothing. And in that case, that was an ampersand error. In other words, an, a reference, by reference NS error. So this is not an NS error pointer. It was an NS error star star. Okay? You, know, you don't understand that? Um, this thing right here, if I wanted to get the error, I would have said at sign error like this, and I would have had NS error star error. Okay, so this is an, uh, this uh, this would be equals nil, but an ampersand error is a pointer to this pointer, so that would be null. Okay, all right, a little aside there. That's a good aside. Okay, so uh, one thing that's bad about this this guy right here. What's that going to do? This bad. block the main queue. So we're not going to fix that because we're going to be time constrained here, but I'm going to put a warning in. So there's a nice little pound sign warning thing you can put in that lets you add your own uh, warnings. Oops. It really blocks the main thread that is used by the main queue. But this is basically creating a warning, and this will remind you to go back and fix this before you submit it, for example, because you don't want to have any warnings in, in your code. Okay. So we're not going to do this right now because we want to get on to some of these other things, and we're going to run over time as it is, but um, I'll do this at the end and then I'll post it. Okay, but the good news is we have set our model back in our super class right here. Okay, so we have all the information we need now to use our tables, use data source to load up that table. All right, so first, how many sections in this table view? Well, we're going to put it all in one big section. We're not going to have like countries or anything else. Uh, any subsection. So we're all going to have one big section, so we can get rid of this nice warning, actually. And of course, if I deleted this whole method, that would be the same, because the default is one. And here, number of rows and section. Well, again, I only have one section, so I can just return self.photos count. That's the number of photos I have. Okay. Now, if I had multiple sections, I would need to find, return a different number. But here, I only have one section, so I can do that. And then here's our table self row and index path. Here it's saying, what did you put in the storyboard for the identifier for the cell? Well, what did we put? Let's go look back here. We'll inspect this cell. The attribute inspector, reuse identifier. We didn't put anything. Let's try Flickr photo cell. That would be a good name for that. Okay, and so now here in our code, we want to make sure we put the same thing here. And that's how it's going to know to duplicate this particular prototype cell over and over. We could also, by the way, set this to maybe be subtitle, kind of set this thing up the way that we want this cell so that it gets copied, the, the right thing we want gets copied. Um, okay, so we have the cell now, okay, from the DQ reusable cell with identifier there. And then we need to configure the cell. Well, to configure the cell, we need the information from our model. 
So we need to get the dictionary for the photo that's at this index path, in other words, this row and section. And again, we only have one big section, so we really just need the photo that's at that place in the array. So that would be photos sub index path dot row. Okay? I would use index path dot section if I had multiple sections like you're going to have. So now I have the photo. I have that dictionary that you saw. There were a bunch of dictionaries there. So let's configure the cell. Let's set the text label of that one to be, let's say, the photos. And I'm going to use the same value for key path here in case any of these things have, uh, we need Flickr, have dots in them. Import, ah, OK, yes, import Flickr Fletcher. Flickr Fletcher also has all of these things for the keys inside of a photo, the keys inside of a place, which you'll need, some keys that are in kind of all different things. And so let's go here. We want Flickr photo title. All right, and then we'll set the detail text label. That's the little subtitle. We'll do photo value for key path. We need that because this one has dots, and that is the description. And the description one, as you'll see here, is description dot underbar content. And if you remember, if you go back and look at the Flickr thing, you'll see why this is description dot underbar content. Okay, so we got that. We return the cell, and that's really all we need to do. So let's go ahead and run this. OK, we've got that warning there, block main thread. And this is blocking the main thread right now as it goes out to Flickr to fetch. But it did get it. So here's a whole bunch of photos. Some of them have subtitles, some not. OK, that's cool. Cool. We can click on them. But it'd be sure nice if we could see these photos when we click on them, right? But of course, we need to do a segue to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's go back to here. And uh, you know, this segue it is really easy to do. Let's go back to our iPhone storyboard here. What we need, to, though, is the, not, what we want is from image Imaginarium, we want that nice image view controller. OK, well, watch how we can get that. I'm going to go back to my Imaginarium. OK, here's Imaginarium. First of all, I'm going to take the image view controller code and just drag it from one project to another. That's perfectly legal. I'm going to copy it in this case. You could link them, but be careful if you do that. But even more amazingly, I'm actually going to go to the storyboard and grab this scene right here, the scene that has all this scroll view and all that stuff in it, and copy it and go over to this storyboard in Shutterbug and paste it. OK? It did do it. It's just a question of finding it. Put it over on the side here. There it is. OK? So now I have this thing here. Um, and all of the links. Uh, that were in here, since they're all by name, all will still work as long as I have this particular class, which is Image View Controller. Right? It even still sets the thing here to be an Image View Controller. And if I go look at uh, this, all these things, they're linked. They're still linked up. Sorry for the scrolling here, but see, you can see the activity indicator. It's all linked up because it's all being done by name. Okay. So we have this nice thing. So we let's segue to it. We're just going to control drag. We got this cell right here. Sorry, this cell. 